2018. What I'm holding here is a high performance dual socket Thunder X2 ARM based server play. Uh, this is going into uh, ODM designs of uh, servers um, and each one of these um, have very high performance um, and it is coherently connected a dual socket system. Uh, it has very high memory bandwidth and it's our second generation ARM based uh, server um, in, in the, uh, for, for the market uh, of um, cloud and uh, data center. Is each of them up to 56 cores or what was the number? 40, 48? Well, this particular one has um, 32 per core, per, per chip. Per chip. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 32, uh, so those are the big custom cores. Absolutely, so this is uh, where high single thread performance cores. All right, and then... Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's also multi-threaded. Multi-threaded. Yeah. Uh, so is this shipping? It is shipping, mm -hmm. yes. So in mm -hmm. large quantities? So there are multiple ODMs announced at Computex 2017 uh, yeah. with um, uh, designs uh, ready to ship on this. Already available in large quantities. Anybody can build huge servers with that, right? Yeah. And uh, in there, some Thunder X2 servers? Yeah, so we have, uh, this is another form factor. This is a, a standard 19-inch uh, uh, in, a, in a data center rack scenario. Uh, so this rack is includes a lot of our second generation Thunder X2 ARM-based uh, servers and they are running virtualized mobile infrastructure as well as edge computing service. Um, in this rack, uh, it's running um, all of the virtualization, uh, KVM and all of the mo mobile infrastructure including the virtualized baseband which is virtualizing radio access network, also virtualizing the mobile core, all of these plus edge services are running uh, on our ARM-based server. All right. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So what are you talking about here, uh, X-Client? Yeah, so this is a block diagram showing this uh, edge data center rack. Um, so the rack has servers and also top of rack switch. So the servers we, we have been uh, running the virtualized uh, mobile infrastructure um, and then the switch here is based on KVM silicon um, explained uh, so this switch is more than a data center switch because it's also programmable and in this demo is supporting um, SDN controller and also uh, ONF Linux Foundation um, Open Network Foundation um, SDN controller and orchestration platform it is typically used in a spine and leaf fashion, so you can scale to a very big data center. All right. What are you showing here? Is this a is this a KVM desktop? This is actually not a desktop, but um, this is an edge edge computing device. So it is based on a very scalable ARM-based product line that KVM uh, develops. Oction, right? Yeah, it's Oction TX. So Oction TX scales from anywhere between two to twenty-four cores. So it supports a very, very wide variety of um, system designs. So one example of use case is edge computing. So in edge computing, you would put the uh, uh, edge device uh, in outdoor scenarios, factories, uh, or edge data center. So it's a variety of hardware performance level, price point, and um, outdoor, indoor um, kind of form factor uh, difference. So with a scalable product line, we can address all that. Uh, in this particular demo here, uh, this edge service is sitting very close to a uh, base station. So KVM also contributed a base station to um, telecom infra project. Uh, so in this combined scenario... Is that Oction in there? Uh, this is Oction Fusion. Uh, it's a family where we have a complete um, base station on a chip design. Um, so this is actually a base station which can support um, more than 100 users. Is that an ARM or is it a MIPS? Uh, this particular one uh, is, is MIPS. Okay. Yeah. So this one and, um, and edge computing uh, work together. Um, so on this ARM-based uh, edge computing platform, we are running edge services very close to where the mobile data comes through. So for example, um, a user could be streaming a video, and the video traffic would be content cached on this uh, edge server. So it doesn't have to uh, pass through all that, you know, gigabytes of uh, gigabits of um, video traffic over the internet. You can serve it at the local area and save the bandwidth and also improve the latency. Um, so content capture is running here. The mobile core is also running here. 
So this is complete mobile system at the edge. All right. Us using ARM-based uh, edge computing. And uh, what is this device right here? So this is another use case of edge device. Um, in, in this particular case, it could be it's an ODM white box. It could be um, uh, SD-WAN uh, for branch office. It could be a universal CPE device. What's the CPU in there? So the CPU inside is an ARM-based uh, Octane TX. Octane so TX. it is a system on chip uh, using 64-bit ARM. Uh, it can be anywhere between 2 to 24 cores. It is doing a bunch of uh, networking. It is basically doing virtualized uh, enterprise networking equipment. So there's a trend of virtualizing the customer premises equipment, like firewalls, routers, WAN optimization, etc. Um, so a service provider can actually offer this as services, as opposed to um, you know their customer buying a separate equipment. Um, uh, what does it say on there? Well, this is another uh, demo. So, so this box. Uh, once we finish this one, this is yeah. really um, you know running a lot of the uh, virtualized uh, services like firewall, uh, router, which uh, target uh, enterprise office, um, and this is ARM based. Um, so there's a, a big ecosystem of ARM based uh, virtualization containers, also remote management SDN to for service provider to enable this kind of services on ARM. Is it is the stuff mm -hmm. that you're doing? Is that compatible with the, the future of 5G? Oh, absolutely. So all of these demos are related to 5G. So 5G has even a something like this. Yeah, even something like this is related to 5G in the sense that, um, in the sense, well, this particular one, if we use it as an edge computing device, uh, as we demoed over there, you could have mobile edge computing. So in a 5G scenario, you would have the 5G data. Um, and then uh, at, the, at the edge of the network, uh, or the radio access part of the network, uh, pass the data to an edge computer, which could have this form factor, depending on the location and deployment scenario, to do the local services. So it, it takes the 5G and turns it into Wi-Fi or something like that? Well, it's it like would a CPE? Yeah, so that is a little bit different uh, scenario, right? So the 5G edge computing scenario, one is that, for example, you could, um, have an edge computing providing security services um, in, in a box like this, uh, next to the mobile data, right? Next to the base station or radio head. Um, the other scenario, which is uh, uh, the first 5G deployment scenario in US is a fixed wireless scenario. So in a fixed wireless scenario, um, you would have a router at home or office, and the broadband interface uh, is, not is not wired. It is wireless, and it would be through uh, 5G. So you could have actually multiple gigabit of throughput through LTE, uh, through 5G, uh, to to your uh, home router. So, so that's actually that uh, this uh, the demo over here, where we have three sets of different offices, and each one has a router for their local office. But these routers, their internet connection. It's actually through wireless. Um, so with 5G, that could be up to multiple gigabit per second bandwidth. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, so this one is, uh, what is a Sprint here? What are they doing? Are they working with you? Yes, yeah, so we are uh, partnering with Sprint uh, and Arm uh, with Cavium together to work on uh, interesting 5G related um, uh, project. So in this project, um, we think about in the 5G scenario and also IoT scenario where you, you would have to support a, lot, a large amount of IoT devices. So these devices would pose uh, some scalability uh, requirements because uh, you could need to scale uh, to a lot of connections. So your control plane, MME portion of the uh, mobile core needs to scale up a lot as compared to the throughput might not be that high. So to support the flexibility of this scalability requirement and also do it very cost effectively, uh, we have partnered with Sprint to test uh, a case where we would instantiate an EPC as a, a virtual network function in a public cloud. So, and also running on containers. So in this case, um, the EPC, which is the mobile core, runs on a container on ARM-based servers that are hosted at a cloud service, uh, which is packet.net. Um, so at packet.net, they have deployed our ThunderX ARM-based servers uh, so you can actually rent them for 50 cents per hour and you got a 96 core server. Uh, and in this project here, we're instantiating containers as well as EPC on that. And uh, if you go to the ARM booth, you can actually see a demo by Sprint that 
uh, they can instantiate an EPC on this ARM server in less than two minutes. And that's dynamic. Uh, on you, you, you need more capacity, you can just spin it up and it's very cost effective. So it's an optimal way of doing virtual servers or stuff like that? Yeah, so the servers are actually, you can run virtualized, you can run bare metal, you can run containers. In this particular project, we are using containers, uh, which is a lot more efficient compared to virtual machines. All right, mm -hmm. so it's uh, what you call it, the container system, the uh, ARM server container solution? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's containers running on ARM servers. So um, it is pretty standard, but with ARM uh, and with a lot of uh, um, efficient cores, you know, we can in instantiate containers and, and in this uh, public cloud environment with a really cost-effective way to do um, additional capacity for even NFV applications. Nice. So uh, now, as you were saying, uh, uh, the supercomputing, the servers, and uh, its mass production availability. Yeah. So things are gonna more and more stuff is happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Can so, you, uh, even in your future uh, yeah. configuration, where you have a new uh, synergy partner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Right. So. So, you know, with the and then with the um, uh, high end. Uh, ARM-based server, um, we are addressing NFV uh, very cost-effectively with this uh, project um, where we can instantiate in public cloud and also uh, high-performance computing as well as cloud-based applications.